Hello everyone, what's up? Well, today is going to be another Mythbuster video. I haven't been posting any Mythbuster videos lately, and I'll explain to you why. Just because this week right now is going to be very busy for me with uh, school and stuff. That's why you haven't really seen many videos posted up on my channel yet. But uh, rest assured, I'm going to eventually do one. I got a lot of people have requested me to do Mythbuster videos on the uh, PZB, uh, the Trapdoor Spider, uh, Tapnikinius, Siri Cosmos, but uh, you're going to have to bear with me until uh, my exam period is over. So, uh, without further ado, we'll just get started. I just want to show you one tea before we go on to the Mythbuster video. I just received the molt from uh, one of my Acal Cody slings that I got from Eman last week. So, I just wanted to share with you her. It's a nice looking specimen. She just freshly molted, that's why she looks all. Um, colored like this. I would suspect she's about three quarters of an inch. She's probably like now third in star. Very sweet tea. With a very very slow growth rate <laughs> as my ad. Okay so today's uh, Mythbuster video we're going to be tackling my camera can focus the Colombian Lesser Black, the Zenithus Imana species. So I have my species right here. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. So I guess it's fitting and right to start off with the common name of the species, even though I don't really like using the common names, but for those people who are interested of what they are called, these are called the Colombian Lesser Black Bird Eater Teas. So it is a species that comes from Colombia, uh, which is in South America, so you can expect them to be a New World terrestrial species that are uh, opportunistic burrowers, which just means that if you provide enough substrate in your tank, they will burrow if uh, they so choose to. So the Latin name, as I like it, it's called the Zenethus Imanus. So it is pronounced the following manner. Zenethus Imanus. Okay, so now allow me to introduce the other members of the genus that are currently in the hobby. You have Intermedia, Species Blue, and Species White, or Wibe, which is the most expensive Zenithus species in the hobby. So even though I do not have these in my collection, this Mythbuster video will apply to all of these species as well, since they can be carried exactly the same as Eximanus. Okay, so now availability. Well, you will probably most likely find them in online dealers or the Arachnoboards forum, but uh, this genus is pretty expensive, so I'm going to show you some prices on Tarantula Canada's list, just to show you uh, how expensive they are. So. Here we go. Okay, so we have two typical common ones that are sold here. You have the Imanus and the species Blue. So as one inch spiderlings, these go for around $150 to $275. A lot of people say that, you know, US prices are much more cheaper than in Canada. And I've seen some comments actually do say so. It's not like, oh, I could, I paid, uh, Five dollars for an A Calcody sling where you pay thirty-five dollars. Quote, ha ha. Quote. Okay. Well, allow me to explain to you this. Well, uh, the tarantula hobby in Canada is not as big as you would think in the U.S. The U.S. is much more populous. Uh, there's a lot of dealers there. There's like Swiss Inverts. There's Paul Becker. There's uh, Ken the Bug Guy. And there's many more dealers especially arachnoboards, uh, the U.S. section is probably one of the largest. Uh, the Canadian and Europeans are just two subgroups once. So uh, in Canada, there's, since there's not much in demand in here, so we have to import a lot of teas uh, from elsewhere, from Germany and other parts of Europe, uh, just because there's very few people breeding teas here. So of course that's going to jack up the prices, and also just because sales tax here really sucks. So 2011 taxes here is like 8.5% uh, provincial and 7.5% uh, federal. So add up the numbers, it's expensive to live in Canada. 
But other than that, you know, uh, it's pretty cool that we have teas here and we can try to make the hobby much more prosperous here in Canada as, as much as in the US. Okay, so going back to the Mythbuster video, so the sizes now, uh, they're pretty respectable size. They can grow just as much as like Pamphibedia species, typically. Uh, females typically have a 6 to 8 inch leg span. Males are a little bit smaller, as you would expect. Uh, mature males have tibial hooks, as well as bulbous pedipalps. So allow me to show you some pictures of uh, the Zenitha Semanus. And I'll show you some other ones too. Provided I have good battery life. Okay, so this is an Amanus sling. You have the female here, right here. It's a very black tea with a characteristic pink near the carapace, just like your Panthamedia species Platyama. But what's different than the P. Platyama, of course, is the color. But you have these fine brown hairs as, that are very curly, especially when you look at the mature male you can see they're much more prominent in there and they have the femurs just like your P. platyama and just the carapace is, is excessively pleasing here to look at so we have your intermedia which is the same thing as the emanus uh, species white and they have species blue right over here. It's a very nice looking genus, if I do say so myself. Okay, so now the enclosure setup. Well, it's a full grown terrestrial setup as always, so as you have seen uh, during the B. albiceps uh, rehouse video, this will be perfect for uh, Zenitha species. Uh, you can even house them in those larger critter keepers by Hagen, those Phanariums. And see, it's perfect for your big Zenitha species. Like, this is perfectly f happy for my uh, Ple Platyama female. Uh, for slings, I guess, you know, um, pill jars with enough substrate because they like to burrow with slings. And as soon as they go into their adulthood, they might lose a chance of, of burrowing. But then again, as I said, and I repeat, these are opportunistic burrows, so it's best to give them a lot more substrate in the tank, so that way it could encourage the, to burrow if it wants to. So you have to give it that option. In the wild, uh, Zenitha species do burrow, as well as like Lassidoras and Nandu species, as well as Theraphosa species, you know, to uh, escape from predators. Okay, so now their care sheet video. Okay, so I don't think I ever did a care sheet video on the Zenithus uh, species, so this will be a first. So, uh, it's pretty typical of the Pamphobedia species. So, anything I said in the Pamphobedia species uh, Mythbuster video will exactly apply. So, you want to keep them around 80% humidity. Uh, they can tolerate lower to higher humidity. And as well as temperature 75 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit is the great way to go. So we can see here's mine set up. It's in a uh, very tall and wide deli container. So I have here a little hiding place to, that you can hide in there if you so chooses. Um, got a water dish which he turned over which all these do that. And substrate, yeah, I'll comment on this substrate here. Uh, you can actually use potting soil. better. It's actually a little bit better for bird eaters, as Eman had told me to do. Or you can use a mixture of eco-earth and potting soil and vermiculite mix. That seems to be the best working combination. So, now about the temperament of these species. As one can see, if you can see my abdomen on my Zenitha Simanus. It is a very bad hair kicker and it is very skittish and can be aggressive too but very great eaters these Zenitha species are. So I'm going to touch the abdomen just to give you an idea of how fast they are. There we go. Oh yes, I, I should comment on this one. So the Zenitha species are characteristic Famously 
known for their uh, raising up their butts, just like you know the Euphono palma species when they're really agitated. Yeah, see that? <laughs> see, they tr they do that to make themselves uh, appear larger than they need to be, and try to scare off predators. Oh shoot, I forgot the growth rate. Yes, I forgot to mention that. That's important, isn't it? Okay, so the males can mature out as much as four to five years. Females will probably take around five to six. As I explained to you, Genesis has molted once in my care since I owned her since summer of 2010. He was, or she, hopefully, uh, was an inch and a half then, and now it's around two inches. Okay, so handability, of course, I don't really suggest handling new species because of their urticating hairs. Uh, these are potentially one of the worst as non-do hairs. Um, they're very skittish, as you've seen, and they can react a bit defensively, especially when they become full, mature adults. So, as far as breeding is concerned for Zenitha species, uh, they're fairly difficult to breed just because of the female's aggression towards the male. But the sacs are not always the greatest. Um, as I've seen from arachnoboards, they can get as much as uh, 50 to 60. So it's not a very uh, high production species of like the Alpara hibana. But other than that, a very cool species to own. I recommend this one for the intermediate owner that has dealt with a few of those beginners and wants to try to tackle something. This is aggressive. It's a great alternative to uh, the T Blondie because it's much more cheaper than a T Blondie sling and just has the same care sheet too. So that's pretty cool. So that's all I have for now. So I do hope you'd enjoy this awesome Mythbuster video. And the next Mythbuster video that I'll be posting is going to be on the Trapdoor Spider. For Yanni the Tarantula Man, I think. Yeah, the Idiop species or the Symphosia species. Yep, it's a looker. So, I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching.